working on a video essay right now. It's actually uh, a couple weeks ago I posted a video, Reading is Different Now. It was a discussion, it was a video essay of sorts, and uh, reading through the comments of that video was fascinating to me. People brought up amazing points, and so from there I've kind of spun off and I'm doing a bunch of research in another direction. So what we're doing instead today is we're doing something inspired by the Reddit forum, Am I the and I avoid swearing on this channel, but one of my subscribers gave me a way out in telling me that in their language, BASKA, the acronym for this forum, means father. So we will be replacing the word with father throughout the duration of this video. It'll be our own little inside joke. So I asked people in a community post to hit me with your uh, questions or your scenarios in this format, in this style. But to make it more fun, I will be reading the scenarios and passing my own judgment, but I'm also gonna have a form in the description of this video with uh, the different scenarios so that you can also pass judgment. I'm gonna make it so that when you finish filling out the form, you can actually see the results, you can see what everybody else has said, and you can see if you're watching this video in the as soon as it's posted, you may need to come back later and look at the results again, but you'll be able to play along and you'll be able to see what my judgment is as well as what the consensus judgment is. I don't want Stormlight adapted. It will only tarnish the world in my head. Am I the father? Frankly, I think this is perfectly fine. I'm excited to have Stormlight adapted simply because adaptations will bring more people into the series. It will interest more people in picking up the books and in entering the reading world. Adaptations always make readers out of somebody. And so I am thrilled for this to get adapted, assuming that it'll be adapted well. And since Sanderson is going to be very involved in the adaptation, Hopefully it will, but I don't have high expectations. I never have high expectations for adaptations. I don't have high expectations. My brother actually feels exactly the same way when I told him that these were being adapted. He said, I don't want an adaption. I don't think that they'll do it justice. I don't think they'll probably do it great justice either, but it'll widen the fandom. It'll bring more people into the series. That's a net positive for me. But as far as are you a father for this? Nah, man, you're fine. You don't have to watch it. Or if you do, you don't have to like it. Opinions are awesome. Am I the father for not letting my friend borrow my books? I feel bad because he really wants to read Chainsaw Man, but I genuinely don't trust that he'll give me the books back in the same condition. He's a generally messy dude, and the one book I gave to him came back with some damage. So I don't know if I'm being overprotective of my books or not. I would likely, I would really like to know your thoughts on this. Okay. There were a lot of these. I've read through, at the point that I'm sitting down to film, I've read through every single submission on this community post. And there were so many people wondering if they suck for not letting their friends borrow their books. So I speak to all of you at once. You're fine. <laughs> if someone in your life borrowed a shirt that you really like and then returned it to you late and with stains on it, and didn't care, didn't apologize, didn't attempt to replace it, felt like it was fine, and moved on with their lives. And then a month later said, can I borrow another shirt, that other one that you super like? I want that one next. Would anyone consider you a bad person for saying, no, you treat your stuff differently than I treat my stuff, I want my clothes to last a long time, I care about this shirt, wear your own clothes. Would anyone judge you for that? I think no. And books are your possession. No one is entitled to your possessions. So if you don't feel comfortable loaning out your books because you don't, because people in the past have treated your books poorly, you're not doing something wrong. Personally, I lend out my books without a thought because I do not keep my books in good condition. I break the spines, I dog ear the pages, I write in them. Books, I love to put my own fingerprint on the books that I love. I obviously don't do that. <laughs> like if I've borrowed a book from a person or from the library, I don't write in other people's books. I don't other break other people's book spines, but not, every, not everybody is that considerate. And if keeping your books in a certain condition matters to you and it doesn't matter to the people who are borrowing it from you, if somebody, if somebody is not going to treat your possessions kindly when they borrow it and then they're mad at you for not lending them more things, 
That's a them problem, not the father. Am I the father when I go through my sister's bookshelf and check each and every book for dog-eared pages? She gets angry that I'm intentionally messing up her shelves sorting system, but I know she never bothers with bookmarks and it physically pains me to know that she dog ears pages. I can't help it. It's second nature to want to fix these errors, even if it upsets her. I'm very sorry, but yeah, you're the father. Just the same, in the same way that people are not obligated to loan out their possessions if someone doesn't respect them, just the same, what someone else does with their own possessions is their own business. If they're not damaging something of yours, if they're damaging something of their own, that's their prerogative. And she may not view dog earring as damaging a book or, or as an error. She may just view it as, it's a piece of paper. It's a piece of paper with writing on it. It's okay if it gets a little crinkle or a little crease. But yes, going into someone else's room uninvited and intentionally messing up their sorting system to do something to their books that you are not invited to do and that they've explicitly asked them not asked you not to do, yeah, you're the father. Leave your sister's possessions alone. Just, just don't look at them. It's gonna be okay. True story. In my book group online, I said that I liked Ginny and Harry Potter being together, but felt someone else could have been a better match. I was muted for 30 days for spoilers, but it has been about 20 years since they came out, and other books who have been out for far way less for way less time can talk about the couples without getting muted. This really upset me. Am I the father? No. Um, I think that, well, it depends on what the rules, the spoiler rules are for that forum. If they say all spoilers need to be tagged, then you should tag it. The way we handle spoilers in my Discord is we keep it pretty strict. We tell people uh, to tag your spoilers always. Doesn't matter if the book's been out for 20 years. Doesn't matter if it's a classic and it's been out for 100 years. Tag your spoilers because you never know what other people have read. But when people violate this rule or more likely have an oversight and don't think about it, they are tagged and said, hey, well, we at them and say, hey, tag your spoiler, mark it as a spoiler so that it's covered up. And then if they do it, we move on with our lives. If they don't, if they don't respond, then we assume they've stepped away from their computer and we just delete their post and then, and then at them, tag them and tell them why their post was deleted. And then we all move on with our lives. And if they're a repeat offender, if they're, if they're continually not tagging spoilers, then they might get a warning or get muted. But if this is your first offense and you were muted, no, you're fine. You, they, they were the ones of the wrong for that, in my opinion. I'll be curious to read, I'll be curious to read the, uh, the forum responses, the, the collective responses polling for, for this particular one, for scenario three, because as I learned reading through <laughs> the comments on this post, there are people that are real intense about spoilers, like you're a bad person if you've spoiled me. So there might, there might be a couple of people that disagree with me on that one. Okay, this is a long post, so I'm gonna summarize it for you, but if you want to read the full post, just pause the video and read it. But the gist of this one is the poster works at a bookshop and people sometimes ask, for uh, their opinion on what they should read. And if this, if Ryan uh, has an answer for them, can recommend a book, then they happily do. But if they're not familiar with the genre, they tell them they don't have any recommendations, but sometimes people are super, super pushy. So Ryan will sometimes just make something up and say that one, that's a good one. And personally, I think you're fine. If somebody walks up to you and says, hey, tell me what to read, and you genuinely try, Thank you so much for that. And if you say, I don't know that genre, that's not something I can help you with, and they're pushy, and they're they're not listening to your no, I would do that. I would absolutely, I'd be like, that one, that's a good one. Because you know why? Because reading is subjective, and you could recommend your favorite book in the world, and they could come back and say, this sucked. <laughs> I know, it happens to me a lot. So who cares? Who who cares if, if you, I mean, you tried. You tried to tell them you don't know, and they pushed you. I think you did fine. Thanks for helping people pick out books. That's very nice of you. Not the father. Unless I'm very passionate about the series, I look up manga spoilers to feed my need to know what happens next. Am I the father? Why would... <laughs> what? You're not affecting anyone else. Are you shouting this? Are you reading it on your phone in a public area and then saying, oh, the ending to Full Metal Alchemist is X. If you're not doing that, then in what scenario does this, do what you want. Do what you want. I look up spoilers sometimes too, if I'm losing interest in something. Sometimes it reinvigorates my interest and I say, ah, I'd like to see how that happens. 
and I keep reading. Sometimes it doesn't do anything for me and I just DNF. It's, you're fine. Oh, okay. We're gonna conclude part one of this with um, a spicy one. Am I the father for thinking Kafka, Kleist, and Shameso write absolute trash from a storytelling perspective? <sighs> you, you wanted to fight today. You chose to make yourself an enemy of, of the literary internet, and I, I mean, I respect you for it, but whew. I don't care what you like. If you're not being rude to the people who like these things, if you're not seeking out discussions where these things are being praised only to say, this is terrible and you're all pretentious snobs for liking it, or none of you actually read the book, or whatever, whatever people like to do on book forums. As long as you're not being that person, I like what you like, don't like what you don't like. You're not required to like something just because somebody somewhere at some point said that this is masterful storytelling. I don't care what you do with your reading life. And now, an interlude for some humor. A group of people snuck into my family's property, crashed an on-site wedding from my sister, knocked over our house, <laughs> They knocked over your house? And you just like... <laughs> Such a funny... Image. Knocked over our house, beat up multiple family members, and when I tried to stop them from escaping, one of the intruders blew... <laughs> one of the intruders blew himself up to try... To try... <laughs> to try and kill me. And now my family... <laughs> and now my family blames me for his, for his death. Am I the father? Oh, yeah, you are. Of course your family blames you for his death. He died because he was after you. And you, and, and it didn't even work, so it was fruitless. Of course that makes you the father. <laughs> I, one, 104 male, I forgot about this one. I, I read all these yesterday and I've forgotten about the ones that I marked for the interlude. Okay, I, 104 year old male, just met a girl who seems different from than other girls, 17-year-old female. However, this other really hairy guy, 15-year-old male, seems into her. I'm a little bit apprehensive about one thing, however, and that's the fact that she smells delicious and I'm constantly resisting a primal urge to rip open her throat every second I spend with her. <laughs> Am I the father for pursuing her despite this? She seems really into me. <laughs> oh, man. <sighs> I love a good Twilight roast, I'm not gonna lie. Maybe that makes me a little bit toxic, but I do. Um, yeah, you're the father for that, absolutely. Mostly because you're a 104 male, 104 year old male preying on a 17 year old. I don't care that you're stuck in adolescent. You still have the, like, did you forget about all the years you've lived? You still have them in your experience. I don't care. That's probably gonna be the most controversial thing I'd say. Watch people live your life, like what you like. But yes, you're the father. I'm, I'm excited to see the poll results for that one as well. And finally, this is less humorous, but people were real set off in the replies for this one. I skipped Skypea until I caught up with One Piece. Am I right or wrong? I mean, to say, for me to say you're right to do that, I think, I think everybody knows that right isn't the correct answer. Now, are you wrong? I have said many times in this video, read how you want. So I would be a massive hypocrite if I told you you were wrong. But I mean, but, yeah, you're wrong. You, I mean, Skype is one of my least favorite arcs, but you can't skip. An arc is, is the equivalent of a book. Speaking as a book nerd first. An arc is the equivalent of a book. You can't skip a book in the middle of a series because people oftentimes say it's not that great and then be like, oh, I, this is fine, right? It was fine. I mean, live your life, I guess. It only affects you, but what are you doing? father for thinking Stephen King is wildly overrated and popular only due to oversaturation. No! Would agree! So I've read nine Stephen King books, I'm pretty sure, and what's hilarious is that 
in the world of Stephen King, nine still isn't good enough. I have said in the past, before I finished my last Stephen King book, I said, I've read eight books. I think I have a pretty good idea of if he's the author for me or not. And I got multiple comments saying, really, with Stephen King, eight books isn't enough to determine. You have to read more before you can have an opinion on him. No joke, that wasn't the one commenter. That was multiple comments saying that to me. And here's why. One, because even fans of Stephen King know that half of his books aren't actually good and they've just accepted that as a fact about him and he's still the king of horror. I actually think Stephen King is a very good writer and I think that he is excellent at many things like writing tension, writing very immersive books, and coming up with really unique concepts. I also think he's bad at certain things like endings, writing women, writing romance, writing consistently, making sure that every book you put out is at least decent. And fans of King, diehard fans of King, look at me, I'm about to get attacked. Diehard fans of King will just say, well, yeah, but look, he's put out so many books, it's okay that half of them are duds because like that's gonna happen when you write that many but okay, well don't put out every book you write then. Make sure only the good ones get published. Editors, help the man out. Like a dud here and there is totally chill, but my golly. I actually like King. I, I mean, I like a lot of what he does and there have been several books that I've read of his that I really enjoyed. One of which is one of my favorite books, Pet Cemetery. adore. I think he's a good writer. I just don't think he's consistent. I, I think that should be allowed to be said. Watch me get attacked. You triggered me on this one. No, you are not the father or maybe I am. I'll put in the poll for this one. You can vote for me to be the father for this one. I get it, it's all right. Am I the father for wanting other people to stop making noise while I read at home? No! Anytime someone within a five mile vicinity of you has a book open, everyone should just stop talking. Rules of life, not the father. Am I the father for backing out of a buddy read? We agreed to read a nonfiction book together, but no matter how I try, I can't get through it. I haven't told him that I dropped it and picked up The Shadow Rising in its place. I need my fantasy kick, but I'm worried how he'll react. Just realize my friend also watches your channel, so this is definitely a fake post for sure. Oh, all right, I'll help you out. Listen, Naveen's friend, it's not you, it's Naveen. It's, it's not the book. It's them. Not every book is going to be a win. And the fact that Davin has neglected this buddy read for the last month is probably, you probably already know. You probably already know that this is over, that this, this book, it wasn't compatible and it's gonna be okay. Naveen, tell your friend that you didn't like the book and just offer to pick a different book to buddy read. It's gonna be all right. Not the father. Am I the father for judging people who arrange their bookshelves by color? I guess it's their home and they can do what they like, but it just screams, I don't actually read books. I use them for decoration to make my place look a certain way. Now, I don't like rainbow colored shelves either. It's not, it's not my style. I don't like big, bold colors. I'm into neutral tones and I, I, I'm with you as far as personal preference goes. However, Every book in your home that is not currently being read and that is sitting on the shelf is decoration. It is currently decoration. Which means every book that is currently not being read in your home screams, I just like looking like a reader. I'm not actually a reader because you're not actively reading it. And apparently that's the standard. Let people decorate their shelves how they want. I organize my shelves a certain kind of way. I put my favorite books outward facing. I've got pretty collections of things. I didn't need to buy that pretty collection. I didn't need to buy it. Of these Jane Austen books right here, I didn't have to buy that. I could have bought something way cheaper, but I liked it because it's pretty. I've also read every single one of them. It's cool. Every book is decoration when it's not being read. How you organize your shelves is your own prerogative. Yes, no, you're not the father for not liking the style, but you are the father for say for assuming someone doesn't read just because they decorated their shelves a certain kind of way. So yes, sorry. Am I the father for thinking audiobooks don't count as reading? I personally don't enjoy audiobooks, but I have no issue with others using them, but it's not reading, it's listening. I would never try to ruin someone's fun, but a part of me gets annoyed when people talk about all the books they've read when they didn't read them at all. They listen to it. Maybe it's because for most people, listening is just easier than reading. So I see it as, as taking the easy way out. 
I don't know why I care, but it does irk me a little when people equate reading with listening to a book. None of this applies to people with vision problems. That's cool that you added that caveat that people with vision impairments, you count audiobooks, they count for in that scenario. I'll link my video about dyslexia. Um, I grew up with dyslexia and audiobooks have been a game changer for me on my really bad days where I really struggle to physically read, um, if you wanna add a couple more caveats to it. But talking about the main point, the main point of being irritated when people say that they read something when they listen to the audiobook. Here's my perspective. I won't spend a long time on this because there's a billion videos on YouTube people talking about this very topic. Here's my question. Here's my question. What are we counting? When people say audiobooks don't count as as books, as reading, what are we counting? If it's just a matter of personal tracking, like people enjoy keeping track of what they've read, keeping a list or keeping statistics, because that's like, it's fun for them to, to remember everything that they've read and be able to reference back to, if it's a matter of just personal accounting, then I don't, like, who cares? For most of us, reading is something that we do for pleasure and we talk about because we love hanging out with other book nerds. Now, when I talk about what I've read, if I did listen to the audiobook, I always say, I listen to this one on audiobook. It's usually really clear because I don't have the physical book. I got, I got it on Scribd or something, or I got it from the library. But I guess at this point, my perspective is kind of just like, you can judge me if you want the fact that I listen to audiobooks sometimes. You can judge me if you want. It doesn't really affect my reading experience, so. I would say, uh, you, <sighs> I guess I have to pass judgment, don't I? I just said you can judge me if you want and I'm the one that has to pass judgment here. Okay, you don't enjoy audiobooks and you have no issue with other people using them, but it's not reading, it's listening. I would never ruin someone else's fun, but it annoys me when they call it read when they've listened. <sighs> Does that make you the father? It's kind of on the it's kind of on the edge for me because it's you're not like interrupting conversations to say you can't talk about this book because you didn't read it. I'm gonna say I, I, I'm gonna rule this one as as nobody is because it seems like you're not bugging people with your opinion. You're just it just kind of grates on you. And I don't think that makes you a father. I think that's just that's your own thing. Live your life. Am I the father for thinking Caribou is actually kind of cool and should get more screen time in One Piece and I think Murphy's overreacting when it comes to him? Of course I'm overreacting. Absolutely I am. Caribou is nasty and annoying and I hate him, but also my vitriol for him is completely unwarranted. It is way too extreme for the role that he plays in the story, but I can't help that I hate him. I just do. I want him to pull his sleeves up, put his tongue back in his mouth, and just go away. Just go away. But of course I'm overreacting. 100% I am. I'm the one in the wrong here. I'm the father in this scenario. But do you think I'm going to stop? Never. Am I the father for not shutting up about my dislike for The Legend of Korra in discussions involving the bigger Avatar universe? I don't bring it up constantly, but when people are discussing origin of bending, etc., I prefer to just ignore uh, Legend of Korra stuff and treat it as Avatar The Last Airbender only. I don't like The Legend of Korra changes or the series itself and feel the need to mention that in discussions, but I can totally respect everyone that enjoys the series and treats it as canon in their take on Avatar universe. I think that's fine. I don't like Legend of Korra either, and frankly, I don't consider it canon either, but you and I are the wrong ones. I'm just gonna put that out there. You and I, we're wrong. It is canon. It was written by the show showrunners. They said this is part of the series. This is part of the history of bending. They made that call, and it is up to them and not us what is canon. So, we're the wrong ones here. But I too, when I talk about Avatar The Last Airbender and when I when I discuss the series, I really don't pull from Legend of Korra at all, even when it's relevant, because I'm not interested in re-engaging with that series. I'm not interested in re-watching it. I'm not interested in bringing it back up. It's just, it just, it was a miss for me. So for me, I treat it the same way, but as long as you're, as long as you're being respectful and other people can have conversations about it and other people can do what they wanna do with their avatar discussions and all you do is say, personally, I don't take that into account because I hated the changes made, that's cool, you're fine. I am curious though, 
I feel like this is another one that people are gonna have strong opinions on, so I'm, I'm excited to see the forum, the poll results for that one. This took place in 2012. I have this friend, 30-year-old male, who was a high school teacher, who was a high school history teacher. Game of Thrones was coming out and everybody was obsessed with it. My friend, who generally enjoys a good story, had read the books long before the show came out and as a form of discipline in the classroom would write the name of, of the would write the name of the next character that was going to die on the board when his students would not pay attention in class. The students got so upset at the spoilers. I personally think that it was a great tool for classroom management. Was my friend the father for giving spoilers for the ga for Game of Thrones as a form of classroom management? Oh, I respect the creative ingenuity, but yes, your friend was the was the father. Here's why. If your friend came up with a creative way to punish a single student and say, you're not paying attention, here's your spoiler. If, if, your te if the teacher friend found a way to do that, I'd be a little bit more lenient. I still think it's not cool, but I do like creative solutions in a classroom instead of just like, standard punishment. However, I do think that penalizing an entire class for one student's malfeasance, especially in in this way, wasn't cool. I'm gonna say no. I'm gonna say, yeah, you're the father or your friend was the father. Again, excited to see the poll results on this one because people are really intense about spoilers. So I think some people are gonna feel way more intensely about that one than me. Um, but I, I'm also, I'm, Curious. I'm curious where that one will land. Final question. We will end this video on Am I the father for not going out with a girl when she said her favorite Pokemon is Charlizard? I love this question Because I don't talk about Pokemon on this channel. I don't I don't talk about it at all So why was this? Submitted for me. Um, you can date whoever you want. I don't care what you do. I do think that's pretty hilarious. Uh, she, maybe she was just nervous and that's why she said Char Lizard instead of Charizard. Or maybe she's just not into Pokemon and she was just trying to relate to you about something that you liked because she liked you. Either way, you can date whoever you want for whatever reason you want. But I do think that is hilarious. Thank you all for joining me for this lighthearted, fun video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you participated. I hope you put your votes in because I'm excited to see where everything lands. Again, I am going to turn the setting on in the poll where at the end of you submitting your answers, you can see what everybody else has voted. So you can see the consensus without me having to make a follow-up video just reading poll results. But anyway, I hope you had fun playing along. I post videos every Monday and Friday on this channel, Tuesdays and Thursdays on the second channel, where I keep you up to date with what I'm reading, give dedicated reviews, reading blogs, all that fun stuff. I'll see you again soon, bye.